Hello, everyone. Happy Monday morning for Telesur. I'm Cody Weddle in Caracas, Venezuela. Thanks for joining us on From the South. Our top story today uh, takes us uh, to Argentina. That's where the country recently uh, voted in presidential elections. Now, with just over 90 percent of the votes counted there in Argentina, Daniel Scioli of uh, the current government of current president Cristina Fernandez uh, won a majority of the votes. Now, he uh, won less than previous polls had predicted, uh, only beating the second uh, place candidate, Mauricio Macri, uh, by a few points there. That means they will now head into a runoff election that will be set for November 22nd. Now, Macri uh, got just 34% of the vote. Scioli has promised to continue the popular policies of current president Cristina Fernandez of social programs, welfare, welfare, industrialization, and Latin American unity. Now, after the polling stations closed, Scioli called on the undecided to vote for him in the second round. I call upon the undecided and independent voters to join this cause for a great future of Argentine development. I'm going to face this new period as I always did in my life, with more faith and hope than ever. I will continue searching for the meeting points to definitely reach victory for all Argentines. Now, Macri's results were far better than initially predicted. Now, some polls had placed Scioli over 10% ahead of Macri with 40% of the vote. But many voters were still undecided. Macri has uh, been favored has favored a return to neoliberal economic policies, cutting social programs and benefiting extractivist multinational organizations. And he has openly said he would negotiate the countries with the country's vulture fund holdout creditors. I invite you to conquer our future. It depends on each one of you. I ask you now today to take the years that it takes and we won't stop until we achieve it. Because every day from December 10 on, I promise you that we are going to be a little better and we will bring us together. This is going to make us enthusiastic. This is going to make us passionate. This is the Argentina we all want. And it's today and it's here and now. And we are going to build it. Let's go Argentina, let's go together. And in Colombia, citizens went to the polls Sunday to elect governors of the 32 state departments, as well as local councilors, members of the regional assemblies, and also mayors. It has been labeled a crucial and historic election. Our correspondent in Bogota now, Natalia Magadita, with the latest on the election. Colombians have headed to the polls amid hopes of peace. These are not just the first local and regional elections since the peace process began in 2012, but also for many it might very well be the last elections amidst the armed conflict. I hope we can vote in peace and that these are the very last elections after 50 years of war that we have to go to the polls within an armed conflict. The elections took place among an unprecedented reduction of violence. However, corruption and reports of vote buying appeared to some political leaders as a demonstration of the faults of Colombia's electoral system. A system that continues to be deeply corrupt, anachronistic, and which allows that those who hold the economic power manipulate polls and influence the media outlets end up holding the popular elected positions. Those who were elected as governors and local authorities will have a crucial role in implementing the peace agreements. Now, regarding the second most important post in Colombia, right-wing Enrique Peñalosa was elected as the new mayor of Bogota with 33% of the vote. Peace must be constructed in the territories and that's why the local elections are so important. Now, what is that Bogota is so important? Because Bogota has a 20% of Colombia's population and the public opinion here matters in terms of endorsement of the peace agreements, but also in terms of making Bogota the capital of peace. Shortly after Bogota's new mayor was announced, the leftist candidate Clara Lopez conceded defeat and insisted on the importance of continuing working for peace, something that peace advocates hope the newly elected mayor of Bogota can abide by. The real peace is the one that we have to construct on the basis of the social justice. 
The results of this election will set up the new political map in Colombia, a scenario that will be accompanying not just the final stage of the negotiations in Havana, but also the endorsement and implementation of the agreements once a final peace deal is reached. Natalia Margarita, Telesur, Bogotá. And presidential elections also took place in Guatemala. Comedian turned politician Jimmy Morales of the National Convergence Front swept the elections with close to 70% of the vote. Now his election comes as the former president, of course, Otto Perez Molina and uh, his vice president, Roxana Baldetti, are in jail accused of corruption. Now Morales says he will represent all Guatemalans, including those who live outside the country. From the presidency, I will be able to serve 15 million of Guatemalans inside the national territory and 2 million in the United States who also supported us on this occasion. And Haiti also held national elections. People there went to the polling stations to elect a new president, among some other uh, key positions. Now, in contrast with the first round of parliamentary elections in August, Sunday's voting was mostly peaceful, but some residents uh, were disappointed because they were unable to vote because their names did not appear on the listings. The results will be released in about 10 days, according to officials. Preliminary observations of the voting process pointed to a mostly fair election. And around the world now, a developing story to tell you about a 7.7 magnitude earthquake has rocked regions of India, Pakistan and Afghanistan. It happened on Monday afternoon there. At least 70 people are confirmed dead and 100 others have been left with injury injuries. We have more on that developing story and others in our World News Roundup. Poland's Eurosceptic Law and Justice Party leader Jarosław Kaczynski commemorated his belated twin brother President Lech Kaczynski during his winning speech in Warsaw. Exit polls indicate his party was set to take over power after a watershed election. A poll by Ipsos says the peace has secured 39% of the vote, which would give the party 242 seats in the 460-member lower house of parliament. There is so we allow the party to govern without requiring a coalition partner. Today, Poland is definitely much more attractive than eight years ago. Today, it is a country which develops economically, in which unemployment is measured in single digits. This is the state we leave Poland into those who won the elections today. Ukrainians went to the polls in a local election seen as a test of support for the ruling coalition. Voters were electing heads and council members of 24 regions and the capital, Kyiv, as well as the district and local authorities. Ukraine's Western-backed President Petro Poroshenko arrived at a polling station in Kyiv. He called on voters to support pro-Ukraine candidates, but voters have expressed widespread resentment and disappointment against Poroshenko's administration. In the key city of Mariupol, the election was scrapped as tensions rose over claims of foul play. In parts of Luhansk and Donetsk, the vote was held only in the parts of control by Kyiv. What do I think about elections being postponed? I think at the moment, we don't need them. Just a few hours ago, a 7.7 magnitude earthquake struck regions of India, Pakistan and Afghanistan. In the northern region of Pakistan, at least 14 people were killed and dozens injured. People abandoned their cars, homes, offices, schools and other buildings screaming. Structural damage to roads and buildings have been reported in northwestern India. In Kabul, the capital of Afghanistan, buildings took violently where there were no immediate reports of damage of injuries. The first Indigenous World Games opened last Friday in Brazil's Amazon city of Palmas. Now for 13 days, Indigenous peoples uh, from across the world will celebrate ancient skills such as spear throwing as we saw there, tug war or archery. About 1,800 people from 23 countries are scheduled to take part in the games that will last until November 2nd. In the opening ceremony, Brazilian natives voiced their complaints against current president of Brazil, Dilma Rousseff, for what they consider a land theft and the slow destruction of their cultures there. Several Brazilian ethnic groups had refused to, to, to attend the game. We believe that the uh, Indigenous Olympics is just as important as the Olympics. 
Um, it was probably indigenous when it first started, the normal uh, Olympics. So what we're doing is we're taking a stand as indigenous people. Um, you know, like our sports are just as important as mainstream sports. And that's what we're covering on this Monday morning here from Caracas. We have plenty more on all of those stories and others at our website, telesertv.net slash English. For Telesert English, I'm Cody Weta. We'll see you back here in just a few hours.